Hey, it's Dry Bear, and you're probably like me, but enjoying Sons of the Forest to its fullest. It has been a blast running around the forest, fighting all the mutants and cannibals, and exploring the island that comes with this new release. Now, I've already done a beginner's guide covering all the gameplay mechanics and a video going over how to escape the island for the main story of the game as well, but today I would like to cover the building in the game, as there are plenty of people out there that don't even want to engage in combat at all. They just want to build make their empire, make their castle, and enjoy the exploration that comes with the game. So today we're going to cover everything there is to know about building. If you found value in this video, leave a like down below. If you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and say howdy. So let's jump into building for Sons of the Forest. The first thing you want to think about when you start building your empire, your castle, is location. A few notes on location in general. It is going to be difficult to avoid combat for in, in, at all. I mean, unless you're playing on the peaceful difficulty, it will be impossible to avoid combat. But generally, water is safer than others. You can find lakes and rivers that you can build on top of, which is pretty straightforward. The downside with those is that in the winter, they will freeze and the water will become solid and then they can still come towards you and hit. I have chosen to build here uh, on the edge of the beach because the ocean can't freeze and you have one direction to come at. We also want to look at cliff sides on the edge and look for available resources as well. Things like available lumber, available sticks, rocks. Food is a big one too. Again, on the ponds and the springs, you can find fish, which is very useful. You can have Mr. Kelvin here find the fish for you and deliver them to you for regular feeding. And then you want to have the availability for uh, other resources as well. If you need to, you can build further away. And keep in mind, there are tips and tricks for moving large amounts of lumber like a zip line, and we'll talk about that here today. You can see even in this explanation, we still have a raid going on, and poor Kelvin and his PJs are being picked on by these jerks. So you have to be remember that if you're not on the peaceful difficulty, you will have to deal with this regularly. Now that we're done dealing with the invaders, let's talk about building in Sons of the Forest. There are two different ways to build in Sons of the Forest. The simplest and most straightforward is to pull the recipes out of your adventure guide, and place them down in the world and then fill them. It looks like this. Press B as in boy to bring up your adventure guide, your journal here. And then you can find things in here that are either your essentials, which can be on the right side of your screen. You can see these all have steps. You have to follow the steps on screen in order to build these specific structures. It's a combination of resources that you have. And that takes advantage of the custom building system. But you also can switch over to the, the preset built side when you switch to the left side of the screen here and you'll see that all of these you can hover over them and you can actually click on them and then bring them out into the world once they're out into the world you can rotate them with q and r and when it turns white it'll be red when it can't be placed when it turns white it means it can be placed and all you have to do is place it down and then you'll walk up to it and you can see that it requires resources you have to put these in in order as descripted but once you do that then you'll have the full structure done. And if you don't want it, you can hold X to delete it. And that has some really useful structures in there. A lot of these are useful out in the woods. You can do tree buildings or tree bases off of this as well and make extensions on them. And you can also use these as a base and then add on to it with the custom building system, the free building system that exists in the game. But if there's items that you need, the stick bed's great because it's a cheap way to get a rest and save location. You could add lamps to your building, furniture, which is really nice storage for things that you need like logs, bones, sticks, and rocks. You can dry your food so it lasts longer. You have storage for items, and then you can do some more aesthetic things that you can put in the game right now. I believe right now the Scarecrow is meant for armor, but is currently bugged, so it doesn't work. You can also do things like add in planters, which are useful for growing your own plants like this. You can grow your own plants and planters. You can also put up birdhouses, which allow you to farm feathers. They periodically spawn feathers as birds come through, and that way you don't have to hunt feathers, you can just find them in your birdhouses and create that. And it's also great options for storage. You can put all sorts of items inside the, the buildings that you create, and it's nice to flush out your inventory, go out hunting, bring back more, so you don't have to like go out with full rope or full duct tape, and then when you find some, you can't pick it up. So that's the pre-built side, when you have it on the left side here. Let's switch back to the custom builder side and talk about this system. The most straightforward of these are going to be your tent and your fire. You're going to use these a lot as you play through the game. 
And you do this by following the steps on screen. So let's take, for example, the first thing that you'll be utilizing, which is a basic fire. So when you're using the custom building system, you need to put the items required in your, you mean, uh, in your hands, you need to have them equipped. So let's make a basic fire. To activate that, you have a stick as your first component. So we're gonna open our inventory and we're gonna go over and we're gonna grab a stick. So it's equipped and ready to go. And you'll have this special in-context menu that appears when you're using the item correctly. For the case of the fire, if I look straight down, you can see how I have these two stick pieces on the ground. And then I have this left click to confirm and right click to rotate or change the function. If I, if I right click, that means that I'm planting the stick in the ground, which has various uses. Or if I want to make a fire, I need to, as the book says, break the stick in half. And you do that by left clicking here and you put that down. If you do it again, it'll create a little fire and then you'll light this using the lighter. And now you have a basic fire, which you can use to cook food. You can burn bodies for bones or you can do all sorts of things. You can even create a little hangout spot for Kelvin and Virginia once you're at that point in the game. And this easily extends into the custom building system, which I think is really cool. You can now start adding on to these custom buildings based on what they have available. So you can take a regular fire and reinforce it by placing large rocks around the edge of it. So if you have large rocks, again, you need to equip it to use the, the custom builder. So you're gonna go ahead and equip this rock. Now you have it. And the same thing, you just look at your structure. It's a little wonky sometimes, but this is how you would create a reinforced fire. You take large rocks and put them around the edge. And when you get that white dotted line, you know that it's correct. And now you have a reinforced fire, a little more durable and harder to put out. As we look through our journal here, we can see that we can do the same thing with sticks. So if we want to build a stick fence, we would start by planting the stick in the ground. That's the first step here, which we've done with this stick next to us. Then we want to take a stick in hand and we plant another one at a distance away. But it's showing that we'll get this little marker in the ground. So if we look down, we can see that there's a little leash point. It helps us build a fence in a direction we want. But we kind of have that freedom to go in 360 degrees. So the dot dotted line means that you are at the correct distance, which means you can make the fence line out of this. So now that you've got this connected, that's going to be our second step. Third step, you would then attach these together to create an extra line. And then boom, now you've got a fence and you can do the same thing to extend it in any direction that you want, even changing directions if you wanted uh, in order to create uh, different rotations. If you want to create a, a little fence for your wildlife or whatever it is you want to do, you can do that uh, with the custom building system. You can also place the stick down and put a head on top of it, which scares away the enemies. You can use your hatchet or your knife to sharpen the stick. This will actually create a bit of a barricade that will damage enemies that come towards it. You can put skulls and reinforce it with rocks. There's tons of different things that you can do with the sticks or the rocks to create structures. Most of your base building will be done with logs, lumber from trees, which is in this section here, which you can see allows you to create whatever structure that you want. You can create ramps, stairs, uh, breaks in the area. You can create windows out of the logs. It's all custom. So we'll start walking through all the options you have for using logs to create these structures. The first is going to be a basic floor. So you want to structure the floor, as it says here, by putting four logs in a square. Uh, you okay there, buddy? And then you can split the logs in half to create a floor underneath it, uh, on top of it. So once you have that there, you can then just create that. Now, you'll need a structure to do it. So you will need to be able to put down logs in some way. And it functions the exact same way that we did with the stick. So either I can place this log down to create a square around it to create a structure, or just like we did with the sticks, I can go down and right click. And now I can place the log into the ground, which allows me to then attach logs to this in order to create lots of different opportunities to use it. So if we have this, we'll note that we have the same leash mechanic on this stick, on this log here, which will show up showing that we have a, a proper distance from this. And we can use logs to connect these together to create all kinds of structures. If you place the structure wrong, you can hold C to remove it. This will remove it without damaging it. It only works for custom building structures. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for these. You also have an option to lean down on the target here, which will give you a couple options. You can use it to just get the perfect distance. Like if you don't like doing this, getting the distance away from the log that's down, you can connect it, which will make it droop, and then you can place this down when you get the upward arrow, and your character will automatically lift it up and put that across. You'll be able to create a foundation this way, or a door frame, or a wall, 
however it is that you want to do it. And what's cool about this system is it will automatically adjust height as well. It is built on a grid system uh, underneath it all, but if you are worried about that, you can see how as I built this over the rock, it will adjust the height of the logs so that they are accurate and connected. You don't have to worry about that specifically, but if you want to, you can use this over any elevation. It's nice to build a foundation underneath, which is super useful. Then once we have everything connected, we can then start connecting these together to create our own little foundation. You can see how it all kind of comes together in that portion. Now real quick, since I need more lumber anyways, let's talk about how you can move lumber. In the first game, you had the option to create a log sled, which you could fill up with logs and then slide around with you that carried a good bit. We don't have that in the game currently. We don't know if it's planned, it might be. Uh, but let's talk about how you can bring it over. You can either do this, which is actually quite effective, is you can pick up the logs and you can throw them very easily. You actually get some decent distance. So if you have a bunch of logs, let's say we come over to our lumber and try to cut it down and get it all cut and ready to go. You can just throw them very easily. Even if you're alone, you can have the logs fall, grab them, throw them in, in succession, and you can actually cover significant ground with this method. So you can grab a log, log, throw, throw, log, log, throw, throw, log, log, throw, throw. And you can just kind of cycle through this and actually cover some pretty serious ground doing this, depending on the distance you have available. Your next best thing is going to be using Kelvin or your teammates to make sure you collect the logs. So go up to Kelvin, activate him, and you can have him go to get logs. And you can either have him drop right where you're standing, which he'll just bring back, He'll get the logs and come follow you. You can have them give them to you. Or if you're in range of a container, like a log container, you can see how I have a bunch of those over there on the beach. Then he'll you have an option to say fill container, which means that find logs and put them in the container that's over there. So that's another option. And then the other option, once you have the rope gun in the game, is to just use a zip line. So once you unlock the rope gun in the game, which is part of the story progression, you can then equip it and then activate it to shoot it into something shoot it to something else and create yourself a zip line. And then once you have that zip line, you can actually walk up to it and put a log on it. And it slides right down the zip line. Now, a couple things on this, it does have some pretty respectable range. Once you, you can ride it as well, once the logs are down there, I've been using this to build different bases in different locations. And one of the best things that I've learned about these is that if there is a container nearby, you can see how this log automatically fell into this. I put these here so that when they fall off and bounce off of this, they go straight into a container. You can also build a wall as they come down in elevation to land right into it. But if you put enough containers around here, when they bounce off and land, instead of just being on the ground, they'll all start filling up containers automatically. Even if it tries to land in this one and this one's full, it will bounce off and then land in this one. So I've actually been able to fill all of these up just by throwing them down. And then you can just ride the zip back up to the lumber cut it all down, put it back on the zip line, ride it back down, and you can get some very nice lumber over a long distance without ever having to be a building directly next to it. And once you tap through this, you can see you create floors and walls and doors with the same process, windows by cutting out the, the walls there, and you can create steps or stairs, beams, and roofs on top of it, which you can think of as just a floor above you, which it really is struts which allow you to create space inside of a large area stairs or a ramp and there's two different ways to handle that you can create defensive walls which honestly aren't that great you can create ropes that go up by adding rope to it a rope bridge by following these steps firewood which is nice and tent is at the top here again so let's try doing all of those with our little basic structure here so first thing we're going to go ahead and create uh, some stairs or a ramp that goes up Easiest way to do that is to let these fall down to create the shape of it, pick up your logs, put it down, and now you've got yourself this little ramp. And again, this can be as high as you want. You can actually create these spaces to be very short by cutting the logs themselves. If you wanna know how to cut the logs, all you gotta do is go and place the log on the ground, pick out your ax, I think either one of them works. And then when the log isn't moving, you wanna get a good angle on it, you'll actually see these red lines appear, which means you're going to break the piece. So when you cut it here, you'll create a small little nub. You can cut it in half, and you can also cut it lengthwise, which will split it into these half marks that you want as well. So say you wanted to create a very, very small foundation that just takes it off the ground a little bit. Activate this with left click to go into this mode, right click to cancel it, or left click to hit it again with your ax. And now you have two little pieces which you can place in the ground, and you can create your own little foundation that is 
smaller than the one that we have over there. So if you want to make it smaller, you can. So there's the connection. And then it functions just the same as this one would. You can then just freely attach these together, create your own foundation from that. If you don't like the way it's connected, hold C to remove it, and now you're good to go. So let's make a little foundation up here. We now want to make stairs or a ramp. I prefer ramp because I think it's more aesthetically pleasing. So that's what we're going to make. And one trick that you may not know is that you can actually do the splitting while you're building. So when you look at, say, the ramp on the end here, what you have to do to make the ramp is split the logs in half and make the flat edges go up the ramp uh, vertically along the line. And the, the directions that tell you this will tell you to first split the log in half, which you can do. So we're going to do that. Split it in half lengthwise, split the log, and now we have these pieces. So then we can come up to this, this slope here, and we can find the right angle for it. I found that stepping away from the target, so you can see if we get really close, it doesn't show up. Sometimes if you get distance, it's a lot easier to place it down. And then you can just go about your business doing this. Splitting the logs in half lengthwise, putting them down that way. However, if you know you're going to be splitting them in half or splitting them in, in uh, like long or, or short wise, you can just go up to where they're going to go. And you can see we have this moving dot icon. This means that it's going to split the logs in my hand and then place them down. So it'll split it and then place it down. You can see that it automatically did it for me, which is faster than putting it on the ground and splitting it. And even if you get situations like this where there's gaps, it will actually automatically adjust for that too. So you can see that it has this gap here on top. And if we try to do it on top, it'll actually split it, put it down and put it on the other side. So now we have this nice little ramp. We can grab another little log and we can put it on top here. Uh, I sound like Bob Ross at this point. Uh, put these on top and now you get yourself a little ramp. So the next thing that we need is to build a floor. And it does the same thing. So rather than doing this on an incline, you're doing it in the same place here with the floor. So you want to place this down on top here, split the logs, place it, put it out on the top, do the same thing here. And you need one more piece there. I need one for each anyways. If you try to split it in hand and you have one extra slot, it'll just drop the extra piece somewhere. So that will drop that there and then we'll get an extra piece on the ground, which we can then run up to the ramp and finish the top of the ramp here to make sure that this is done and ready to go. Okay, so now we have a floor, we have a ramp coming up to whatever height that we want for the foundation. How do we add a wall? And you do this by getting a log in your hand, going to the edge, and then instead of having this placed down vertically, if you go along the length, you'll see this long indicator, place that down, and then you just got to stack them up. That's how you get these walls here. And when you get to a maximum height, you will get to the height that you require for the verticals as well, which is super nice. So you can actually have this, uh, if you wanted to have this as a measure, you can place this down for now and show exactly how high you have to stack it. But once it's stacked up and you have this built up, you can then build roofs on it or you can cut out windows. You do that as is described by the journal here. So you actually go to the window portion of this and it'll show that you can just cut out the window by going up to it with your ax. And then when you have your ax out, you'll have this little red marker. Hit this, hit it, it'll knock it out and it will create this window. You can make it as big as you want or as small as you want. And it's the same way for making a door. So if I wanted to make a door here, we would need to make a full height uh, cut, cut all these pieces out, pick it out of the cabin, and then we can then grab a log just like we do with the floor and with the ceiling and with the ramp and with the stairs. You're seeing the continuity. You're seeing it all connecting together. You can then just grab a log, go up to that spot and split it with your direction on top of it. And it will create a sliding or a swinging door for you. Put that down, finish it off, and you've got yourself a door that swings in and out. Super flexible, super nice, and all described in this custom building system here. Now let's talk about the struts and support so that you can get a look like this. So you actually won't be able to add, so say we wanted to add something on here. If we wanted to add in this and we wanted to add in another log that goes out this way, it will be unsupported and the game won't let us extend it out infinitely. So we'll have to have some kind of support for it. So if I go to this side, since there's no log over here, if I want to put it up, my only option is to lean it because there's nothing over here holding it up. So the question is, how do you get an open space like this where the beams just go straight across and there's no cross beams here in the middle that look like this that hold up the ceiling? And the answer to that is going to be using your strut, which looks like this. All you have to do is first build the correct structure like this. So say we have this here. You can see this is correct. If I try to remove this, I can, 
But if I try to have this connecting here, it's going to be a little bit less available. So let's add even another layer onto this so that we can just make sure that we know how it works. Now, it will let you remove these by default, but it won't let you put uh, the roof across it. So the way you fix this is by taking half logs. They can't be quarter logs. They have to be half logs. Go up to the corner of the edge, and then you can create a strut which allows it to get reinforced and support on that corner. You can do the same thing on the other corner. And once you have those in, then you can freely remove these, get your logs back, and then you have this long beam structure, which you can then put flooring and roofing on, and, and it will support its own weight, as long as these struts are in here and supported. And once you have that basic structure, you can start adding flooring, roofing, you can cut things out, make whatever it is that your heart desires in your structure using the custom building system. You can also then use the, the uh, pre-made, the prefabs here that you want to use for your structures in order to actually create all kinds of things, right? You can have this as a baseline, so I can create a, like, a little cabin here, and then you can start adding to it with the other structure on top, which makes it even more flexible and interesting. And this system's awesome. I think this is a great option for survival games to be able to be this flexible. Hey, buddy. Uh, and <laughs> to be able to create whatever you want. And that's how the building system works in Sons of the Forest. Hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this clears things up for you and demystifies it and gets you into the game. As always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and say hello. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.